Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with a little bit of a uh, follow-up video to my F-15 E terrain following radar video. Today we're going to take a look at the A-4's terrain clearance radar, which is actually quite different um, and quite a bit earlier, but actually once you've, uh, at least I found, once I flew the F-15 with the terrain following radar, I was able to get a lot better idea of how the terrain clearance radar works. So here we are flying in our A-4 in some pretty dirty weather, same kind of weather as we flew in the F-15. So let's go in the cockpit and get the uh, terrain clearance radar set up and see if we can use it. Okay, here we are jumping into the A-4 cockpit. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of crappy weather. We're, we're basically going to fly the same trace that we did in the F-15 video and, and actually use the same weather. So a lot of it's going to be similar. That's going to be helpful uh, in helping us compare the two systems. Now, uh, you need to do a little bit of adjustment with the A4, quite a bit more than you do with the F-15. Now, the F-15 just has brightness and contrast controls, but the A4's display um, needs to be twiddled a lot more, and that's, again, just because of it's an older generation of electronics. The pilots needed to do a lot of adjusting that the circuitry handles on its own these days. Uh, so you not only have brightness and contrast, you also have gain and you have persistence um, and I'm not going to bother going into what they all do. You can check the, the knee board for the controls, but really, honestly, it's just a matter of uh, fiddling, I think, until you get a trace that looks like you want it to. So that's what we're doing. Uh, now, you see that the alarm is going off indicating that we are kind of aiming at terrain, and I don't see that on the scope, so that's why I'm continuing to adjust it. Okay, finally getting to some values here where I can finally see what I'm looking at, and let's keep adjusting things here a little bit. So, like I say, it takes a little bit more work than it does in the F-15, uh, and that's just a function of the, you know, the generation of electronics. Uh, this is 1965, this is not 1985. Okay, I think we're zeroing in on it. Yeah, I can at least see some changes on the screen now as I adjust things. And you, we know that we're coming up to a hill ahead of us there. Okay, now we're starting to see it. Okay. I think we're finally got, we've finally got the radar adjusted to the point where we can actually see some data that we want to see. So maybe now's a good time to just step out, take a look, and compare this display to the F-15 display and talk about how they're different and what the, um, you know, how to interpret the information. So you can see there's a lot of information on the left-hand display, which is obviously the F-15's display. There's only really two pieces of information on the A-4s, and they correspond to what the F-15 calls the raw data, and then there's a line that kind of looks like the preferred maneuvering or zero-G curve or zero-command line uh, on the F-15 display, but it's not. Because whereas the F-15 display shows you terrain you could avoid without a dramatic maneuver, that's why it's called the zero-command line, the A-4 display tells you terrain that you are aimed at if you don't change anything. In fact, well, it tells you terrain that you will fly less than a thousand feet above if you don't change anything. So that is that is why this is not terrain following radar. This does not tell you how to follow the terrain, but it tells you how to stay clear of it. And that's why it is terrain clearance radar. So we have to do essentially the terrain following computations in our head. The pilot is the terrain following part of this uh, exercise. The radar just provides the cues to allow the pilot to fly it. And you can actually do it um, if you know what you're looking at. And again, having flown the F-15, now I kind of know a little bit more about what I'm looking at on this E-scope. Uh, and in addition, the A-4 also has a B-scope, a plan mode, which is also very useful for taking, for deciding what to do if you're trying to sort of follow the terrain. And I'll show you what I mean. So the B-scope is effectively the same as the F-15's air-to-ground uh, radar mode rather than the terrain following mode. It gives you, except what it's, it's in what is called terrain clearance mode, so it's not showing you a picture of the terrain in front of you. It's showing you a picture of all of the parts of the terrain that are less than a thousand feet below your current flight path. Yes, I think I have that right. Less than a thousand feet below your current flight path. So it not only depends on your altitude, 
it depends on your attitude as well. If you aim yourself at the ground, you'll get a lot more terrain clearance blips. So it's based on flight path and it measures all of the pieces of terrain that are less than a thousand feet below your flight path. So if you keep flying at this attitude, you will clear those pieces of terrain by less than a thousand feet, which is essentially the same thing that the e-scope is showing you, but side on. So the difference, uh, the usefulness of having an e-scope and a b-scope is that the e-scope will tell you about terrain that you might have to pull up to fly over. The b-scope is showing you where that terrain is so you can decide whether you'd rather fly around it than over it. So for instance, in this b-scope uh, image that we have on the screen. Now you can see there is essentially a pathway through that sort of goes off to the top left. So uh, if we miss the first uh, piece of ground that's just there, just to the right of our flight path, and then start turning to the left, we'll actually be able to fly down the valley. And I'll show you how this works uh, as we fly along. We'll flip back and forth between e-scope and b-scope, and it's actually pretty useful in trying to plan a route. <laughs> Okay, so let's get back in the cockpit and take a look at where we are. You can see we are coming up to this hill right on the coast. If you look at the e-scope, you can see that we're pretty far above it, but I'm going to turn off this tone so we don't hear it anymore. Um, so we can actually go a little bit lower. Now remember, you can see as I raise and lower the nose, that's going to cause the warning light to come on. So again, it's not based on how high we are, it's based on where we're pointed. If we're pointed too close to the top of the hill, we get a warning, we have to raise the nose. Now, if you think about it, this is exactly what the terrain following radar in the F-15 does automatically, except now we're having to do it ourselves. We get a warning light, raise the nose. You get, don't have a warning light, drop the nose until you get a warning light, and then you raise the nose. That's how you follow the terrain. At the same time, though, uh, so now you can see we get a nice a curve that follows the line pretty well. That just means it's flat. So we're looking out ahead of us here, and we can see that there is that, uh, that obstacle light, which is pretty far in ahead of us is actually um, the start of the valley that bends to the left, and we could see that on the B-scope. Now, remember, if you're going to do this flipping back and forth, you won't see anything on the B-scope if you don't have a warning light, because if your flight path vector is not going below your terrain clearance altitude, nothing shows up on the B-scope. Yeah, we can see now that brake is getting a little closer to us, that obstacle, so we need to turn a little bit left and try and line up with that B-scope trace. And again, we're a little high, so we're not seeing much. Let me just get it back so I can actually have a light to take a look. Yes, we can see the path going off to the left. So you can see I'm doing a lot of working with the radar as I'm flying the aircraft. I can't see bugger all out the window, so I'm not really looking out the window. I'm looking at the scope. So now you can see we've got a, a situation where the train is actually pretty flat. Uh, but we are um, not clearing it by as much as we want to. Oops, now if you look at the e-scope, you can see we have a high ground in the foreground. See on the vertical part of the trace? A and then it drops off. So that turns out to mean, if we look at the b-scope, we've got a little knoll that we're just coming at the left-hand side of the knoll. And so we can actually go around that obstacle by veering off to the left. And now we can tell by looking out the window, now it's cleared up, that actually that's because we're a little bit far right in the valley. We're not flying down the middle of the valley the way we were in the F-15. And that brings up a point, I'm just, I'm just going to pause the video here for a minute and talk about another difference between the F-15 and the F and the A-4. And that's the difference of how digital navigation is handled. The A-4 does have the capability of doing uh, digital navigation, but it's kind of limited. And like all of the other electronic functions in the A4, it requires a bit of pilot input to make it work. So instead of having a cue on the HUD that tells us exactly how to get to the waypoint, we could set the next waypoint. We might very well have to put it into the nav computer and we could follow the HSI and we could do all that. But I'm telling you, while I'm trying to fly the aircraft watching the radar scope, I don't really have a lot of bandwidth to be messing with putting new waypoints in, especially if I'm only seven, 800 feet above the ground. So it's, it's kind of hard to manage doing digital navigation at the same time as you're doing terrain clearance. And I think the only way to really do this well in the A4 is probably to do a lot of map uh, reconnaissance before you fly and understand where you are when you do see parts of the train or if you can correlate them to the B scope and, and then kind of estimate where you are. Uh, you probably would have a map on your kneeboard and you'd probably be referring that to that all the time. But um, that is really the almost the 
biggest limitation of doing this in the A4 is you just don't know where you are with the same fidelity as you do in the F15. You can uh, avoid terrain, you can even follow terrain pretty well, but you can't figure out uh, where you are and how to navigate to where you want to go nearly as automatically as you can do in the F15. So anyways, uh, I'm not going to do a pop-up at the end of this mission, just partly because of that, because I really wasn't exactly sure where I was when I got to the end of the trace or near the end of the trace. Uh, I just wanted to see if I could actually get there without running into anything, and I can, and you'll see that. But I'm not going to do a dive bombing run at the end of it. Okay, so uh, let's restart and just uh, finish off the run here. Okay, so we're in a pretty good spot here. We can actually see what we're doing. Uh, in fact, it's so bright we can hardly see the radar screen. Uh, but again, this gives us a good chance to correlate the ground with what we're seeing on the radar. And what we're seeing on the radar is that there is a bit of an obstacle fairly close to us, directly in front of us. Uh, but that there isn't very much, uh, there's nothing really high farther out, which essentially is a way of saying we're flying down a valley, which is where we want it to be. So now the weather starts closing in again, and we can see that the valley is going to turn to the right up ahead, a few nautical miles ahead. We can see that that's really, the valley wall is really the only thing that's upsetting the e-scope. There's nothing in the, in the near distance that's a problem. We're at a good height for that. But we are going to want to have to make a turn to avoid running into the far valley wall. So we start arcing around a little. And we just have to try and keep uh, looking at the b-scope, looking at the e-scope. We still haven't turned far enough because we still have that really that nice bright ridge. So we're going to go around to the right. You can see that it's fairly high, and you can see basically it must be fairly high because we can't see anything beyond it. Okay, now we're seeing a little bit beyond it. Hopefully that means that we're aiming a little bit more down the middle of the valley. You can see, yeah, we're getting there. Now we're getting the feeling that just about everything is um, in front of us is too high. There's no sort of pathway forward, so we're, we're going to have to go over pretty much whatever the obstacle is. We're not... There's no real, real way around it. Now, you can see this is all a, um, you know, an exercise in three-dimensional reasoning from two-dimensional projections or something. Um, it, but, you know, I don't think it's impossible. I think it really it is a matter of practice, though. You want to do this a bit. Uh, and I'd even recommend, you know, if you have the F-15 flying it and seeing how the, how the computer does it, because really what you're trying to do is, is to figure out how to model um, the way the computer works, you're trying to apply essentially the same logic that it does. And you have the tools to do that. But, you know, like I said, um, you really don't have any uh, spare capacity for doing much else if you're flying this close to terrain and visibility this bad. I'm not sure that I could do this at night, uh, but in bad weather, um, you know, I think if I knew where I was going and I knew pretty accurately where I was, I think that I could. Uh, I think that I could manage to fly the jet in this weather, uh, and fly it effectively. So uh, that's really been an interesting exercise. It, it's a lot easier now that I know how terrain following works when a computer does it. It allows me to look at the A force data and actually replicate that uh, using human logic, uh, which was what I before when I've used the A force radar. I didn't really understand how terrain following worked and how the computer does it, so I wasn't really. Um, using the data very effectively. But, so you can see it's a matter of ra constantly raising and lowering your nose so that you can tell whether you're, hit, you're pointing at the terrain or not. Now, you know, the terrain clearance line gives you a thousand feet, so you don't need to be too worried if you are actually uh, pointing, getting an obstacle warning at times. It doesn't mean you're going to fly into something. It means you're going to fly less than a thousand feet over it. So uh, essentially, just like the actual computer algorithm, what you end up doing is kind of hunting. Uh, you raise the nose when it's uh, when you've got no obstacle warnings. You lower it till you get one. You see where that is. Maybe you check the B scope to see if you can go around it, and then you repeat the process. So you're really replicating what the train following radar does automatically. Uh, and I think that it's a skill you can learn if you want to, and if you're willing to spend the time doing it, which is probably the way it was for pilots at the time as well. There is no shortage of anecdotes from pilots of this era that essentially, you know, say that for the with all the newfangled technology, there were some guys who were really interested in it, could really use it, really got to know it, and there were other guys who learned the, the basics that they needed to know but didn't really pursue it and, and never really um, sort of used it to its full capacity. And I think that's very much a tale of the time. 
So let's just take a quick look where we ended up. And you can see we pretty much ended up at the initial point we used in the last mission. So it, it was a successful navigation down the valley. The problem is, honestly, I could not tell you without looking at the map exactly where I was. I wouldn't have known where I was with respect to the harbor without pulling up. So that's something I'm going to have to think about how to do is how to navigate at the same time as you avoid terrain. Um, that's something that's going to take a little bit of work. Um, but um, that's my little attempt to turn myself into a terrain following radar. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do let me know if you give it a try, if you find out some other tricks of the trade that I have missed. Uh, but that's going to be all for today. So for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off. <laughs>